folks, good evening and welcome. I'm Sheila Balgobin and I am the Dream Decipherer and I help you to crack the code of your sleeping dreams so you can sleep sound and dream deep. Don't know what's going on today. The uh, internet is playing up and of course it plays it hasn't played up all day until I had to go on and do my live. But never mind. Uh, this evening I have... Uh, a dream in three parts, uh, three distinct sections, and um, cars and arguments seem to um, figure in this one. So we'll start with the first part uh, where the dreamer reports that two former managers visited him at home. And while they were there, the his dad, the dreamer's dad, was shouting at um, the dreamer's eldest son. Afterwards, he had a, a bit of a set to with his dad and spoke to him and said, you know, he really found his behavior unacceptable. So that's the end of the first uh, part of the, the dream. The next part, the dreamer was out and about in his father's car, a Morris Minor, which is dubbed the Owl. And during this, his outing, when he returned from buying some things at the supermarket, he got to the car park and found he had lost the key to the ignition. So he had to go home, so presumably on foot, and then return with his father in his car, which was a, uh, a BMW, and the spare key. Now, the dreamer during this time was concerned that uh, he might be ticketed for the way he had left the car parked when he went home to, to get the spare key. And that's the end of the second part. Now, part three, there is a, a lady in a sheltered scheme who had died and uh, the dreamer's boss had asked him to conduct an investigation as to what happened. The scheme manager had written up an, a report, apparently, and there were some inconsistencies. And when the dreamer and the scheme manager went to the head office to see the boss, the dreamer's boss, that is, she fired the scheme manager on the spot. And there ends the third part of the dream. Now, looking at these in turn, the the first part of the dream, you're talking about uh, there were two ex-managers that were mentioned. Whether they were male or female isn't stated, um, but they were visiting the dreamer in his home, which seems a bit interesting. Why would it be necessary for um, people from his workplace to come to his home unless there was some kind of emergency? So I, I would question that. What was the purpose of those people being there? Who were they? Were they people that are actually represented in waking life? Or do they represent some aspect of the dreamer himself? And what were they doing there in the home? What was the purpose of their visit? That may give some more clues as to what, the, um, they, what they actually represent. Now, during this, this time that the, the managers were visiting the dreamer's home, for some reason or other, the father of the dreamer was yelling at one of the dreamer's sons while the people were there. And afterwards, he had a, a bit of an um, altercation with his dad, saying that basically his behavior was just unacceptable. Why was the father yelling at the, the grandfather, yelling at the grandson? And what... <laughs> I mean, was it was the dreamer upset more because they, there were people, strange people in the house and he was yelling at his son? Or was he equally upset that he was that his son was being yelled at at all? There's just a question as to what the yelling was about and what this was it the circumstances that created the upset or was it the, uh, the son being yelled at? What was going on there? Now, I wonder in, for the dreamer, is there a, a relationship to something that's actually going on currently in waking life? 
has there been some kind of upset between the dreamer and his and his father or between the the father and the son the grandson that is so um I just wonder what was going on with that. But at a, a different level, I just wonder if, if the, the dreamer's father and the dreamer's son represent some aspects of the dreamer himself, um, the older adult person, as well as the inner child um, who may be getting yelled at for some reason. And I put that to the dreamer to think about. So that's part one, and now we we move on to part two. Now, <laughs> the this this is the uh, another time that um, cars have featured in this dream this dreamer's dreams, and in particular this uh, particular car, which was this um, green Morris Minor. Now, there's something about this Morris Minor. Uh, it could be maybe that it's age, the the vehicle belongs to the dreamer's father. So there's something about the, um, maybe a nostalgia effect or something, but there's also the implication that it's something that's a bit old fashioned or traditional. Um, and maybe in this sense, they're, they're a stand in for the dreamer's parents in some way. Now, the interesting thing is that the car is nick nicknamed the Owl, um, and owls have the reputation of being able to see in the dark, um, of being wise, of being able to turn their heads all the way around. So there, there's something um, in relation to the parents and the nickname of the car and the car itself. Uh, Psychologically, vehicles, as I've said more than once, can often represent our journey through life. How we travel in our dreams can represent our journeying through life. Now, the, the dreamer had uh, taken the car to go on some errands. So the, he's, although he's driving the car, which represents psychologically some agency he's in charge, it's not his car. It's his father's car. So there's something about um, uh, perhaps about being independence or interdependence that may be indicated um, by this, this, this car appearing in the dream. Now, the as i said the drive the dreamer had um taken the car and was using it as his own so that he was acting under his own steam yet again it's it's his father that comes to the rescue with the spare key um who happens to be driving um let's see i think it was a beamer <laughs> uh yeah he was driving a beamer so the dad has a nice new car <laughs> And yet the son is driving his his dad's old car. And there's something about that that's almost like a, a, a switch in roles or a play on roles or a reversal of roles in, in a sense. Um, so even though the, the dreamer has his, has his own way of getting around, um, it's subject to his dad's rules in a, to a certain extent. So that's the that bit but then we look at this the the destination of the dreamer that that's o the only destination that's mentioned in this part of the dream and that's to go to the supermarket supermarkets representing sustenance um being being fed but it's also a place of mass gathering a place where you know there's mass production of food and mass and masses of people so there's something um along the lines of um lots of choices purchasing things on mass in a, you know a group think perhaps on a psychological level so going along with the crowd um, you know, picking up what the, what's common to, to people. Yet, despite all of that, the, the dreamer loses the, the car keys in while shopping. And when he gets to the car market, 
gets to the supermarket, he finds that um, he's got no keys. So he's, he's powerless and has to return home on foot. So there's a slowing down of the journey. If we look at vehicles as movement through life, now he's on foot. He was, he was sailing along in the car and now he's on foot. So he's moving more slowly. So he goes home, so presumably on foot, to get the spare key. And his dad um, picks him up in his nice Beamer and takes him back to the supermarket so he can pick up the car. Now, it's a, it's a, as I said, it, it's a kind of reversal of roles. You would think it's, it's the son, you know, that's driving around in the new model flash car or newer model flash car. It may not be a new car. Yet it's it's the the son who drives the old car and the father who drives the big car, big new car. And perhaps there's something in that with regard to, as I said, role reversal, but also ways of thinking. Perhaps in some ways the, the father thinks in a more forward way than the son does, possibly. I put that to the dreamer to think about. Now, um... In I, my question to the dreamer at this point is in, in waking life, is the father supporting the son in some way? And maybe there, this is where there's a bit of semi role reversal going on or um, a continuing of a role, a parental role where the parent is in charge. Now, moving on from that to the third dreamlet, as I call it is that there was an investigation being conducted at a sheltered scheme where the a patient died or a, re, a resident died. And the dreamer was charged by his boss to do an investigation. Now, upon the investigation and checking with the scheme manager who wrote a report, there were some inconsistencies. And when they were called in to see the the boss, she fired the scheme manager on the spot. Now, there's, I just wonder if this may be what I call part of a, a smokestack um, dream where um, there's stresses and strains of the day, it's like somebody cuts you off going to work or you've had a fight with your, your partner or your kids are driving you crazy. And at night, your system is just burning off that stress um, and showing up as snippets in a dream. And I w <clears throat> excuse me, wonder if that may be what has prompted this little bit um, about um, work-related items um, in first the first part of the dream and this last part of the dream. So there's like a little sandwich <laughs> where, you know, there's work and um, in with, with uh, kind of personal errands in between. Now, the... The, looking at the, the boss and the, the, the scheme manager, um, I wonder, the boss is, is apparently female, the, the scheme manager is male. So there's, there's, there's a something about, you know, a power, possible power struggle be, or a struggle between the sexes, who's in power. The boss is, um, is acting as the, in a sense, the kind of the, the, negative aspect psychologically of, of the great mother, the castrating mother, the one who, you know, who cuts people down to size and puts them in their place. Um, whereas the male scheme manager, who was kind of like the house mother at this, this sheltered scheme, was the, the nurturing role um, or the, the loving mother, um, if you will. So the, there's, there's a, a, a Again, a flipping um, of roles here where the it's the, the female that seemed to be is the bad guy, if you will. Um, and the scheme manager, you know, the poor uh, put upon male um, being castrated by this this female. So there, again, there's something about about um, perhaps role reversals, sexual role reversals that enters into this and, and power and more importantly, power, uh, relationships. 
And that's something perhaps for the dreamer to, to look at. So in these three little um, dreamlets, there has been um, the inclusion of, of working life into the, the hint, uh, in the dreamer, in the dreamer's dream rather. And in between, like I said, like a sandwich almost, there is a personal bit. So as almost as if it's um, work is, it looms more largely <laughs> at, at some level than um, personal life does. And I wonder if there might be some, a message there to the dreamer about work life balance, so to speak, and that um, work seems to take up a lot of the uh, dreamer's uh, time, both in this dream and perhaps in real life. And that may be something for him to consider. So there you have it. Um, you have cars named Owl <laughs> and arguments and, and co-workers showing up at, at home. Now, um, as always, there are many reasons why we dream things and what, what each symbol or lack of symbols is pertinent to what's going on with the dreamer at that time. So those the p characters that appeared in the dream may or may not actually be themselves, but may more likely be aspects of the dreamer. So I right, thank you so much for watching and listening. Have a great evening and rest of the week. And I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.